Hey, do you want to record a podcast interview, webinar, or virtual summit through Zoom? Do you want to figure out how to get the best quality through Zoom? If you do, watch this video because I'm going to show you how to set up your Zoom settings so you get the best video quality. But before I get into it, remember to subscribe to this channel for more video production, marketing, and branding tips. Remember, I post every week and I do live streams every Monday, so tune in and learn more ways to build your brand with video content. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing you need to do is open up Zoom, of course, and go to preferences or settings. So we wanna go up to Zoom, I'm on a Mac. I'm gonna go to preferences. I wanna go to the video tab. And this is where you're gonna choose what type of camera you're going to use for Zoom. Now, I'm gonna use an external camera. So I'm gonna go down to my video capture card right here. And so to get the best video quality, I prefer using an external video card that connects to my DSLR camera or my mirrorless camera and I can change the lenses and then also use different types of settings in my camera to make it look better than just using my laptop camera or a webcam. Right here you can see original ratio. Now an original ratio, if you uncheck it, it's going to crop so the image fits into the frame. Now if you like this image, you can just scoot back in your camera and where you are and you can actually be inside your frame. If you wanna keep the original ratio, what happens is it's gonna compress it and this is because it's taking the 720 image that's coming from your camera into the video capture card and make it standard def. And so if you want high quality videos, I would actually click on this HD so that you can actually have the best looking video. Now the thing is, is that it does take up a lot of bandwidth, though it's happened with me before where I actually had my Zoom crash. So you really have to have a fast computer, a probably an ethernet connection to your computer. At the same time, make sure that your video capture card uh, is actually compatible with your computer. You has, your computer has to have the requirements or the um, system requirements for your video capture card and you should also research on which video capture card is going to be the best for you. And again, a video capture card is going to help you attach an external camera like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or a cinema camera to your computer using an HDMI cable out and then into a USB in. And that's how you record in HD and it's going to be recording in 720p. Okay, that's 720 by 1280. The default resolution is 640 by 630, which is small and low quality. Now, according to Zoom, you should get 720 by 1280 pixels or 720B with a free or pro account and 1080P with business or enterprise. But many say that the 1080P feature doesn't hold up on a long call or it can sometimes crash Zoom, which has happened to me a few times because I've had long webinars or even long live streams. So I like to stick with 720p. 20p and it's totally fine in post you just have to manage your expectations with the type of video content you get from zoom now other than a video capture card and an external dslr or a mirrorless camera you can also purchase a webcam and a webcam you can get online where it's a usb connection and this is good for people who don't have an external camera you know what i'm my setup is for a filmmaker and a videographer who really wants high quality videos but you can find the right camera online that uses USB, that's a really great option for you so you don't have to worry about changing lenses or a video capture card. But this is how I find is the best way to get the best video quality is using a video capture card with an external DSLR or mirrorless or cinema camera. Just remember that you can't get 1080p video or HD quality from a low level camera. You need a camera that can output 720p, 1080p or 4K and can connect to your computer. Now scroll down, you can also select to touch up your appearance and adjust for low light if you don't have lighting and need to brighten up the image in a dark setting. So you can do this right here, touch up my appearance. Uh, if you can tell, it actually makes my skin a little smoother, which I like. <laughs> it all depends up to you, so you can take that off. Now for adjusting for low light, what this does is that it just brings up the, the brightness. Now, it, if you are um, actually uh, well lit like I am right now, you can see that I don't need this. But if you are in a dark lit situation, you can use this feature to adjust your gain or your exposure. Just remember that if it's really low light, that you may also get some grain or noise in your image. Next is you wanna go to the advanced tab down here. Then click on optimize video quality with denoise. What this does, it enables software-based noise removal to improve the video quality. And also check on use hardware acceleration for receiving video so that you have enough power to stream and record high quality video. And now it's time for sound. 
It's best to use a mic outside of your internal mic on your device. You can use your AirPods or a headset. The next step is using a professional mic with an external sound card, which I use for podcast interviews. You can choose which microphone you're using here or when you start your Zoom call, which we'll talk about later. Unclick automatically adjust volume if you are going to mix your own sound and use the meter here to adjust your levels, as you can see. I can talk and talk and talk, lower the level so I'm not clipping, or I can actually talk and see if I'm actually gonna be clipping the actual levels on Zoom. And what I do is I have an external sound card so I can actually adjust my volume using my external sound card. What I like to do is keep it in the middle and just do some sound checks. You know, you can also raise it up here and just make sure you don't peak and get into the red over here but also don't be too low in volume. As always, try not to blow out your sound and decrease your volume either on your external sound card or using the volume slider here to keep it from peaking. You can also click on the suppressed background noise. I keep it on auto. For music and professional audio, you can actually click on this button called show in meeting option to enable original sound. What I like about this is that it automatically disables zoom noise suppression, removes high pass filtering, and it removes automatic gain control. And it's recommended for people who are playing music or for studio-like environments with higher quality microphones, speakers, or audio interfaces. It's not recommended to use for noisy environments or for general meeting use. The reason why is that uh, if you have the automatic sound adjustment right up here for a regular meeting that's great because you can you don't really care about the the sound quality but if you want professional sound you want to be able to mix things on your own and so i click on this setting right here and click on high fidelity music if you are capturing music uncheck echo cancellation if you are using headphones and check stereo audio if you want to capture stereo sound. For podcast interviews or video interviews, I don't use echo cancellation because I use headphones. So I click on stereo if it's just one person with a good mic, and I uncheck it if it's more people who don't have great mics because this option will increase the bandwidth usage and may slow down the Zoom application. Next, go to the recording tab and choose the folder to save your files right here. You'll be recording to your computer so you get the raw files and best quality. So choose a place with enough hard drive space. Click on choose a location to save the recording to after the meeting ends. What this does, it allows you to pick where you want to save the file after the meeting has ended. So if you want to put it on an external hard drive when you're running out of space or you want to keep things organized, this is the best thing to do. Also, check record separate audio files so you can split the audio files for each participant, which is great for sound mixing and podcast interviews. Next, click on optimize for third party video editor so you get video files that are in the best format for video editing. Also, click on record video during screen sharing if you plan to share your screen. Next, go to the general tab and click on the view more settings. And it's going to open up your browser and we're going to go on the Zoom website. On here, go to the meetings tab and scroll down to turn on enable group HD. What this does is that it activates higher quality video for the host and participants, although this will use more bandwidth. So again, have a great internet connection or, or attach your computer with an ethernet cable because if you're gonna be capturing high quality sound and high quality video and then making sure that everyone's video streams at high quality, you're gonna need a lot of power on your computer and internet power to have everything run properly. And before you start recording, make sure you have great lighting, a good background that's clean and on brand. And you're framing yourself on camera that's eye level and usually at a medium shot or waist up. If you are recording sound, record in a quiet room and finally wear the right outfit. Now it's time to open up Zoom. So now I'm going to create a new meeting. So now you can go down to the left-hand corner and you can choose your mic down here. Now, if you're using headphones, you can find your headphone connection here. And for your microphone, you can find your microphone, external microphone connection here. Again, for video, you can choose your video source here. Mine is a video capture card. And there you go. Now you can see my video capture card with my external DSLR camera and my high quality microphone right here. So next, press on record and record on this computer. 
Now you press record and record locally to your computer so you can get the best quality. But remember to have more than 10 gigabytes of space on your hard drive so you have enough room for your video files and your computer won't crash. To get the best resolution, capture interviews in speaker mode mode and go full screen and pin the person you want to capture to get maximum resolution. Use gallery mode if you want to capture everyone on screen, like for podcasts and panels. Now you can pause the recording throughout the call, like if you need to use the bathroom or if the Wi-Fi cuts out in the middle of an interview, and then re-record by pressing play when you're ready to go back up again. It will save one big file or two separate files. Now once you are done, you can either press the square button or the stop button or end the meeting and it will stop the recording for you. Now it's going to start converting. It would take some time to convert the video, so do not cancel this dialog box. Once that's done, you can choose where to save your file. So let's say I want to choose a location. I'll put this on my desktop. Save. And now you can see my files right here. And also my audio, if I had two people on here, I have two separate tracks. And there you have it. You have your high quality video here as an MP4. And you have separate audio tracks here for sound mixing. And that's how you record a video in Zoom at the highest quality. Now, if you like this video, please like, comment, and share this with anyone you think would find this helpful. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button below to get notifications. Remember, I post every single week and I'm here to help you grow your brand with video content and learn more about video production, marketing, and content strategy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.